we're now broadcasting. Woohoo! Welcome, yeah. folks, all of the early birds. I love seeing the numbers go up. Hi, <laughs> 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 everyone. <laughs> like high velocity. A yeah. lot of people are waiting to get in. Hey, uh, welcome, folks. Uh, it's Mark Collard speaking to you, and we have eight other beautiful people who you can see in the thumbnails of this webinar. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and, uh, and good evening, no, man, no matter where you are in the world. While we wait for people to arrive, we have many hundreds of people uh, waiting to get in. I'm going to invite our panelists and you as attendees to answer a couple of quick questions. And in fact, this is our first tip. We're actually going straight into it to be able to uh, start play. Um, it's going to start simple and then it'll become a little bit more complex. And all you really need to do is either remember your responses. Uh, do not enter them in the chat. No need to do that, but you might want to put them on a piece of paper or something of that nature. Here's your first one. It's a must choose. You cannot sit on the fence with. Oh, Pepper, Will's ready. He's got his pen ready. So when we think in dinner, your choice is dine in or go out. Do you prefer to dine in or take out? So dine in at the restaurant, dine in at the restaurant or take out. Bring it maybe back home. Dine in at the restaurant or take out, bring home. Just take a quick note and uh, what is your preference? I know it always depends, oh. but which would you prefer? Generally speaking, that's your first one. Second scenario. This relates to television. Reality, sitcom. Reality, sitcom. If you're not familiar with that term, it means situation comedy, canned laughter, reality. So Mark, for everybody that's just joined, you're saying that we can't be a fence sitter. We have to choose. Yes, one of you two. must. You must choose oh. one or the other. Exactly. You must choose, Chad. I know that's going to struggle for you. <laughs> you need to think which one. You may dislike both of them. Which one do you dislike the least? All right. Go to number two. Check that, when you see that's reality, fancy. Mark, you say, are you talking reality TV? Yeah, yep. it's all about television. On TV. <laughs> reality television. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, beach or mountain? Beach or mountain? If you've just joined us, folks, uh, I'm inviting you as much as our panelists to answer a series of questions. They must choose. Cannot sit on the fence. And we're up to our third question. It related to their preference for either the beach or the mountains, the beach or the mountains. You can make your own record of what you would choose at this point too. We have two more questions. They become a little bit more difficult now. This relates to your role. Would you prefer to be the star player on the losing team or the benched player, the person who never got out in the field for the winning team? Star player, the most valuable player, but your team lost? Or the benched player, the person who never got out to play, but you were on the winning team? Must choose one or the other. Having conducted that question many times, I can almost, I almost know what the answer is going to be. We will find that answer out in just a moment once we officially start. And here's your last question. If you've just joined us, you'll only get this one question, but you can still answer it in your mind. You have a choice that you must make between these two options. It relates to knowledge. Would you prefer a general understanding of everything? <laughs> or a complete understanding of just one thing. General understanding of everything or a complete understanding of just one thing. What's your preference? Ding, 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 A little bit of thinking time. All right, you should just check your answers. You should have five answers. All right, we're gonna go back and go over those again one more time and we'll find some real value and now going to the next step. Each of you needed to make a decision based on your own individual preference. You can't be wrong. There's no values here. It's just what your preference is. I'd now like you to imagine for the 499 people who are presently <laughs> engaged in this webinar, if we could poll them, and in a moment we will, what would be the preference for the whole group? So go back through the dinner. Do you go to the restaurant or do you take out? Is this a restaurant kind of group 
or a, a takeaway kind of group. TV, same thing, reality or sitcom, location, beach or mountain. Is it the star player or the benched player? And finally, general understanding or complete understanding. Okay, we're now gonna find out the answers. So I'm gonna issue a little poll that I know each of our panelists and all of our attendees will now be able to complete. So go ahead and click the option that reflects your particular choice. Can everyone see, just give me a thumbs up panel. If you can see a poll on your screen, go ahead now and make your choices. Panelists can't answer the poll, Mark, just so you know. Say that again, Amy? Uh, panelists cannot answer the poll. Oh, really? Because okay, well, we're about to find out for the rest of the group then. I was not aware of that. Thanks for Amy. So it appears that the panel, panelists can't answer, but everyone else can. So we're going to get a real good understanding. So how well do our panelists know these 513 people? Mm. All right, I'm going to give it well, another 10 seconds so that we answers. can move forward. We can see all of your answers before you can, and it's quite interesting. Oh, you can. Oh, okay. I was oh, not aware of that. I wonder if the fact that none of us can really dine in at the moment is skewing Ooh. the answer ah. to the first oh, one. Oh, I see. That could be the case, Tracy. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, everybody, if you've just reality. joined us. We're about to make an official start. In five seconds, we're going to finish this poll, and we'll get a sense of how we've engaged ourselves. And you will have already experienced the first tip of at least nine over the course of this webinar. All right, I'm gonna now end the poll. Sorry if you've missed out. So I can tell you now, sharing the results, that we are a restaurant-loving, sitcom, beach-enjoying, star player on a losing team, general understanding of everything kind of group. I'm in the wrong group. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be the complete opposite to everything else, Lisa, absolutely. Yeah. It means nothing, but what you may have noted that as soon as you join this webinar, folks, you had something to engage yourself with. And this is the first tip as we move now into the official start. I'm going to go completely uh, analog here. And you can see here what an unofficial start is. It's effectively any strategy that facilitates early engagement and interaction and amplifies the productivity of your program and your group. That's something that I found really successful in all forms of meeting, not just, of course, those where we are online or those that are in person. We all have that issue of waiting for something to happen. So if you were here at two minutes to the hour, we were always able to engage you. It makes it productive. It provides opportunities for people to connect. And that is going to be one of the key elements of what we're doing over the course of this webinar. And in fact, it's gonna be leveraged with Chad Littlefield's uh, presentation just next. But I am going to quickly just point out that there are eight other thumbnails here and we're going to hear from all of them in just a few moments when Chad invites us to connect. So Chad, handballing to you, my friend. Mm -hmm. oh. You're muted. <laughs> <laughs> that's the second tip of the call is when you go to talk, you've got to unmute yourself, <laughs> something that's commonly forgotten. Um, so as the official start, uh, I want to kick off with something that we discovered, uh, playful that we discovered in the planning and prep for this collaboration. And that is um, the Zoom high five, which is just as an official start group, like welcome to being here. High five. Welcome, 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 welcome. <laughs> Lovely. And it maybe get the person below you, perhaps, or above you. Nice. Yeah. Um, so in a moment, I'm going to kick off with some uh, connection before content. It's one of the most powerful things that we can do to engage groups. But um, I want to offer a little bit of context and just official welcome for those of you who are hopping on. So I think we're almost break, breaking Zoom right now at the capacity uh, of the webinar. And so for wherever you're coming from, whatever context you're in right now, welcome. I, we are all really glad you're here. There's a lot of time being donated to this moment uh, right now. And so even though we're with you with uh, through pixels, we're with you. So um, welcome. What I'd like to uh, frame up is that there are three ways that you can be, three mindsets that you can have throughout the rest of this webinar. You can be a critic, a consumer, or a contributor, right? Critics, very comfortable pointing out everything that's wrong, not so interested in doing anything about it. Consumers kind of just passively scrolling through life, 
And third is a contributor. And we're going to invite you all to be in the mindset of contributor by even though this is a webinar where we're not going to necessarily hear your voice, we'd love to hear your voice in the chat. And so, for example, um, one of the coolest things that can happen virtually is we can get small talk out of the way in like five seconds. So where are you calling in from? Where are you from? Everybody answer that in the chat. Five seconds, right? We have that uh, responded to. Whoa. So now that uh, that's out of the way, I want to. Um, oh, I can't keep up with it because. <laughs> I told, you, I told you we were going to break Zoom, so here we are breaking Zoom. <laughs> this looks like my inbox in the morning. <laughs> oh, lovely. So um, as a, as a uh, connection before content, I want to invite, and oh, one more thing. As, as context for this group, rather than being a panel, which um, I, I view as a line of people, a line of experts, who just sponge out everything that they know to you. We are going to be a very rectangular circle group in person. So we're actually gonna facilitate each other through some exercises. And my invitation, our invitation from this moment forward is to ruthlessly misinterpret everything that we say and do and apply it to your own context. It's one of the coolest ways of being a contributor. Ruthlessly misinterpret everything that we say and do and apply it to your own context and one other way that you can contribute is we will not be monitoring the chat really intensely throughout because we want to be present with each other and with you so that you can get the most value. And the chat is your second, your collective brain. So feel free when you're ruthlessly misinterpreting or getting ideas or riffs off of what we're doing or talking about, put your ideas in the chat so that other people can have them. We had to pick a number. So 10 tips to promote engagement and connection. But I think that as a group of 504 people, uh, we can probably come up with a couple thousand tips by the end of this call. So all that said, connection before content, here we go. So to my lovely group, can you all run and grab an object, leave your virtual bubble, go somewhere and grab an object that in some way represents the work or the magic that you bring to the world? Grab an object that in some way represents the work or magic that you bring to the world and come back and don't show the camera. Keep it under sub camera until you're back. So for those of you watching, um, one really important thing is happening right now with the group. And it's one of my favorite ways to create connection before content is to invite people to get out of their virtual bubble. I'm assuming that everybody on this call has experienced some version of Zoom burnout or exhaustion because all day we're hunched over here. So much to the point that uh, actually in a little bit, I'm gonna turn my video off and participate from a couch horizontal because I collapsed on Friday after a neck spasm during a Zoom call because I've been hunched over the computer so much. And so as an invitation, um, there's something really uh, transformative about having a group get away from their virtual bubble and come back. So um, now group, it looks like Nate went on a, like a 5K to grab his object. He's back, hey. Um, so if you can all just to provoke some curiosity and be curious about each other, hold your objects up to, oh. <laughs> so you can see the, the visual magic that's happening right now. Now group, what I'd love to invite you to do is give a one sentence intro, holding up that object, describing, uh, sharing your name and the type of work or the type of magic that you love to bring to the world. So turn that object into a one sentence intro and we're gonna go around in the order that we're gonna facilitate today um, as just a little mini intro. So uh, Mark, you're gonna go first and then I'll go and then Tracy and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Again, just one sentence, Mark, go for it. Thanks, Chad. Uh, the rubber chicken. Uh, it says fun, and that's a big part of the work that I do at Playmio. Uh, we create training workshops and provide resources for people to help them connect. Chad. So I grabbed this deck of We Connect cards. It's one of my favorite tools that Will and I created. It's got a bunch of questions on it. I love questions because I think that we live in a world with an uh, international curiosity deficit, and questions have the ability to change the conversations that we have. Tracy. Ooh. I bought my Tibetan bells. I use these in workshops. I, I work with leaders around ferocious warmth leadership. So how do you get the great connection of head and heart and results and relationships? And so that resonance 
um, happens. Also, when we do a whole lot of collaboration, because I do lots of collaboration, it just helps to bring everyone back to centre in a really lovely way. Nice. Phil. All right, so I, I grabbed a piece of tree, a unique piece of tree, uh, mainly because I love the outside and I love being in the outside. And I think that a part of adventure education, experiential education is finding new and experiencing new and unique. So this is new and unique for many people. Uh, what is it? What is it? Adventuresome. Uh, Amy. Hi everyone, I'm Amy Clymer and I grabbed this deck of Clymer cards. It's a deck of cards I created to help teams or teams and people have deeper conversation with each other or to be more creative together, which is what I do. I teach organizations how to be more innovative and do a lot around design thinking and creative problem solving. And Jenny, you're up. Hey everybody, I'm Jenny. This is a headdress that I made. And it's fun and sparkly and very DIY. I'm a very DIY person. I love to explore and create and discover and then share what I learned to hopefully benefit other people and to further the field of experience design, play and connection. So I will pass to Lisa. Thank you, Jenny. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa. I am a trainer and facilitator at High Five Adventure Learning Center in Vermont. And my object are these suction cups. They're called squigs. And what I love about them is that um, you can always try something new. I love to tinker with things, try something new. Sometimes you throw it at the wall and it sticks. Sometimes it doesn't, um, but they always connect. And that's like super, super important to me is having different connections all the time. So, um, Mr. Nate Folan. Hi everyone, Nate Folan here. Um, so I have Xylophone and what I do is uh, co-create spaces where people can be seen, heard and loved. And if love is too much for you, maybe appreciated, valued, understood. And I do that in a couple of spaces uh, for myself, with Nateful and Consulting. And actually a lot of my work is with Operation Explore currently through a contract there, as well as with the Brown Center from New Hampshire. So lots happening, lots to be a part of. And there's also the curiosity of what does it sound like when we all come together? On to Will. Thanks, Nate. So this was a gift which represents the world that a community and I created together that was created by our speaking and listening. Back to you, Chad. Beautiful. So uh, really quickly, everybody point to Will, wherever he is on your screen. Yeah, so this is a fun dynamic to add in if you're doing intros to point and mess with the, uh, the gallery view. So that connection before content, a uh, really powerful way to kick off with by both connecting to each other and inviting people to connect to the purpose of why they're there. I think that's something that icebreakers sometimes miss that connection before content does so powerfully is connect to the purpose of why we are there. People who don't like icebreakers may really appreciate connection before content when there's a strong intention connected to the gathering that you're on. Now on another uh, group meeting, I might have split us out into uh, breakout sessions to have conversations about those objects. There's a number of ways you can do that. Um, but inviting people to get out of their virtual bubble and then come back is immensely powerful. Two logistical things before I kick it over to Tracy, who's gonna give you a really lovely lens to look at the, uh, the rest of our session with. Um, two things, I see some of your questions coming through the chat. To be fully present with you, um, all of us won't be monitoring the chat, but there is a Q&A and there's the ability to upvote questions. So at the top of the hour, we will have what we're calling the unofficial end, which is we will stop it, um, but then we'll go on for about 20 minutes of Q&A and answering the top questions that surface over the next handful of minutes, right? So if you've got questions, put them in the Q&A feature on Zoom, not the chat, because if they get lost in the chat, whoo, they'll be lost most likely. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is just a reminder that throughout, to contribute your ideas as we share, especially after each person shares, ruthlessly misinterpret that and say to your own context and say, how might I apply this? And feel free to type that into the chat so that other people can consume it. So for example, if you're working in education and you don't have access to video, you could have invited people to still run and grab an object, come back, type that into the chat, and then to share a little bit about what that object is. And so even right now, as we transition to Tracy, I would invite all of you watching right now to type in one object that is really personally significant to you that represents a part of who you are in the world, just to see that explosion happen. 
um, before we hand it over to Tracy. So sharing one object in the chat that represents a part of who you are, just so we can get a fun explosion of who's with us today, as Tracy gives us a really beautiful framing to dive into the rest. Beautiful. Thanks, Chad. Um, I love, there was a, a Tinkerbell pen in, in that that someone said. I, just There's so much opportunity to have good conversations around this stuff, isn't there? Hey, panel, I wanted to ask you, who is a doodler? Who loves doodling? Me. Yay! Well, you know, I reckon, and yeah, I reckon we need to tap into this. I think what we've, we've almost forgotten with this Zoom, this camera stuff, is that it's okay not to just be staring at the screen all the time, you know? Um, that's, that's, how do we get ourselves out of that? So um, many of you will be familiar with the idea of sketchnoting, doodling. I invite people at the start that should they want to grab a pen, grab a, grab a texter, why don't they sketch note some of the thinking that's coming um, up for them? Um, so that at the end, they've got a little bit of an artifact to be able to take forward. So I just wanted to do the old hold one up. That's one some, uh, that someone did the other day. So I do a lot of work with school teams, school um, teachers and educators uh, around how do we create a collaborative learning culture together. And so it's called The Buzz. And so we might have a session and some people just grab what's popping for them and create these visual images. It doesn't have to be colour. Here's a black and white one. Uh, but the thing is that everyone creates their own. So it becomes uh, this thing that when you look back, it takes you back to the stuff that you thought about, the stuff that the person speaking was saying in a way that really resonates with your brain. So this is all about you know, cognitive overload, which we're getting majorly at the moment. How do we think a bit more cleverly about doing it? So when we're online with people, I reckon doing the good old, you can get people to sketch notes so they take their own visuals, but doing um, just some really big pieces on a flip chart can be useful. So I'm just going to give you some of the, the, the research. You might know these numbers. If you work a lot in education, you may very well know that um, all, the, all the research around how we think and how we learn, 10% um, is probably going to be remembered after if we just use words. And yet how many how many meetings, how many classrooms, how many professional learning webinars have you been on when all that's been done is people talking to you? Panellists, who's experienced that in the, just in the last week? Yeah. Just a whole lot of talk. And Tracy, speaking of yeah. words, actually, what I'm noticing in the chat, just a quick shout out to everybody. There are so many good words happening in the chat that are addressed to only panellists. So when you type ah. something in the chat, change the setting to type into all panelists all and, attendees, and attendees because we love your ideas but everybody else is going to care about them much more um because we're yeah. present here so to all sure. panelists and attendees we want to hear your words but i want to know what 35 percent is cool 35 percent is and we just use images like just images by themselves so that's a huge jump put them together though words and images and all of a sudden jumps to 65 percent that i'll probably remember after 72 hours how amazing is that so can i just get everyone to grab a pen um or a pencil or a marker and a piece of paper and let's just have a little bit of a muck around with a couple of things first off i love using templates and um i think collaboration happens so much better when we're all working around the same thing so can someone on the panel have a go at guessing what sort of conversation could you have with the team based on that picture? Peaks and valleys. Like, peaks and valleys, yeah. Where are we really nailing it? And where are we having some real troughs and some challenges? Wisdom from the mountains. Nice, like it, thanks Mark. What else could you see? Mm, values. Yeah, great, where are our values, yep. What's our vision? Mm -hmm. What are the big bits right. we're working it's at? Optimistic. It's sunny. Yeah. Nice. And then what are the rocks? What are the challenges that we've got? Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden we start thinking. So can I get you to grab a pen 
and just, I want you to just draw and have a bit of a play at be a person. So I use Star people and a lot of people will know Grove Consulting that sort of kicked off the, the star men years ago. Um, and here's, um, this star man's jumping for joy because it's 6 a.m. in the morning in Melbourne, Australia. Woohoo! Uh, and here I am in the morning. Um, so there's, there's uh, just lots of ways that you can even just use star people to brighten up what you're doing. I like doing star people that are doing handstands and, and turning. Uh, thanks, Susan. Susan said I'm very cheery for 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, the, the only the one that I would also love you to do for this session is doesn't have to be excellent doesn't have to be um, exact is to just take down some of the great ideas that are being popped up in this webinar and just do some light bulbs write down we've got some great ones already happening so how could you liven up what you're thinking about but also how could you liven up uh, what you're doing it helps people capture things it connects us better to the ideas and um, and it gets us to think about how to communicate better so hope you had fun with that i'm going to throw over to phil nice Nate. i love it <laughs> Thanks, Amy. Uh, okay, so I'm going to be doing a, a problem solving challenge with the group uh, that's here, this nine people, and it's going to focus on the gallery view. So what I had everyone do before they came onto this call was prep themselves and have numbers one through nine on separate sheets of paper, this being nine as an example. Now, if I could ask all my panelists now to close your eyes. Okay, close your eyes, Nate, close your eyes. There we go, perfect. Um, and the reason for closing your eyes is I'm gonna show the answer grid to everyone watching. So this is how I see everyone in my grid, in my gallery view, starting with the top left-hand corner all the way to the bottom right-hand corner. Now my aim is to get them all to show their numbers in this order with their names associated with the correct number. Okay, you can open your eyes now, panelists. Now your job is to, in as few rounds as possible, try to be able to get those numbers shown in the order that I can see. Now it's gonna look confusing to you, but what I'm gonna do each round, and a round consists of you showing a number. And after each round, I'm gonna tell you how many grid locations you've got correct. I'm not gonna tell you the specific locations, just the number of grid locations correct. And your job as a group is to try to figure out how to get to the right answer. I will give you a clue. In my position, I am number two. So you've already got one answer. Yeah, sorry there, we'll throw the twos away. <laughs> okay, <laughs> at this point, what are your questions? And then you can begin. And I'm gonna give you probably about two minutes. Okay, so everyone's show, it looks like everyone's just committing. I did have I did a poor job prepping Phil so but I have 10 fingers can I use Sorry, these It's okay sure. So looking at my looking at my answer sheet you have a total of four correct oh four are correct oh, is I'm giving you Does That include you Phil four are correct That includes that includes me yeah okay. ah. So correct and in the right spot okay So change your numbers if you so need to change your numbers maybe have a discussion It's popped up there <laughs> what did you say, Nate? We had two fours and two eights. So Trace right. and Chad had fours. Amy and Jenny had eights. All right, Amy. Yeah. Okay, you want to change? I'll stay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me know when you're all good. Can I stay here? Seven. Oh, we're all different numbers now. Okay, so you're already different numbers. This is round number two. This might not be the best strategy. <laughs> I know. I don't think we had all the numbers represented, though. That's no, why we I didn't. Came. You have two correct at this point. Oh, two correct. oh boy. Maybe Let's go back. Go back. Great. Okay, so I stayed as a one. What do you guys I, think? Should I also I stayed as a seven. And Nate stayed as a seven. Do you guys I think? stayed as an eight. Oh, I changed from oh, nine I to changed. I changed. I can go back to two. What did I have? Eight. You want to go? Oh, no, Phil's two. That doesn't work. Good. Oh, and he's probably right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's probably right. My, Phil, Phil, Phil is two. We got that. <laughs> My 4am right. start is catching up with me, I think. 
All right, I'm going to go back to being nine then. Uh, that leaves okay. us with six. Jenny, right. do you want to be? We're getting lots of good hints from the chat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mastermind yeah. strategy only change <laughs> one or two things at a time. We are some really rough facilitators here. Thanks, Greg. Um, we've got two threes. Yeah, don't you think? I'll go All right. six. Yeah. All right, wait. I'll wait until you're committed. Are you committed? This is, looks like committed, Jenny. We've got Lock it in, Phil. Lock it in. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's changed. In. And this one now we've got. I'm connected to Jenny. Oh, we have three correct. Three correct at this point. Okay, three. no. Did you <laughs> one Our last, first attempt was one best. Last round, just based on time, one last round. I think we Let's should go spend. back to the original. We're gonna know. Yeah. <laughs> the audience. <laughs> so, the original Tracy, I'm one was switch missing. back to four. Yeah. I'll try and I'll try five this time, Tracy. Now, oh, we're, we're all different now. Luck into different. success, it would be incredible. Okay. All right, so we're committing. Oh. Jenny, <laughs> right, here we go. We've got two nines, nines, Jenny. We've got two nines. Uh, yeah. we B6. Six. Do we need to set it, Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, the comments is... in the chat Jenny, are like, great. okay. Poor okay. things. So, <laughs> can we help? <laughs> we have to know what's oh, correct. Final oh. round. Your final round. <laughs> Annabelle just gave us a hint. You have got. Five correct. That's a great score. Five, <laughs> five correct. That's your best so far. So I'm in it just because of the time, but obviously this would obviously last longer. There'd be great discussion. One thing I was thinking about um, with this, and it could be around names, um, is instead of giving people assigned numbers, you could give people different names of the people in this group. So I could say, Nate, you're going to be holding up the name Amy. That could be a way that you learn names uh it could be very confusing even more than this so just i put this out there it's an idea but the point of this the tip i'm sharing with this is that we've got a gallery view everyone's just different except you as a facilitator get to see a grid and your grid will stay as long as people stay in without it flipping around so you can use that answer that grid as your solution to some initiatives awesome phil thanks phil it's great great right. any thoughts as we hand off Okay. If not, yeah, Amy. I want to. I want to okay. inject the before you toss it to Amy. I just want to inject the riff. I can see we're all facilitator time optimists, yeah. and would love for at least one or two of us, um, as we go through each sharing our activity and our concept, our idea, to have one riff off of that. So, for example, I'll just toss one out. I love the idea of doing mastermind, but doing it with cultural values for an organization, so that you're constantly repeating the words and cultural values to try to get them in a particular order. It could be fun, or, or you know, or nine words that you value, um, for example. Cool. Okay, now Amy. So, mm -hmm. I, but oh, want to continue Nate. that pattern of riff off of each other. I, know, I would say before I pass as well that, like, just in terms of this activity, uh, it lasts a long time. I would recommend you possibly doing two or three rounds in total if they got to the answer swap some of it in some way, change the parameters so they get another opportunity to give it a go. And be aware of the time that it takes. If I was to do this in a real setting with normal, normal people, <laughs> with people <laughs> not in the virtual setting, <laughs> yeah, there's uh, something to that. Um, uh, I would give like, it would probably be 20 minutes per round, per, I mean, giving it a go before they got to the solution. So just realize that going in. Um, and also, Notes is handy for people if they're taking notes as a solution for people taking part. If you're as a group taking notes, that helps. But remembering, trying to make sure you don't make an error when you give the answers per round is really helpful. I've plenty of times led this activity and misgiven, given the wrong information to the client, to the group, and then that's negatively affected the outcome. So just be aware of those things when facilitating. Awesome. Right. Amy. Thanks, Phil. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Amy Clymer and when we're not in a global pandemic, I typically work in person with organizations to help them uh, learn how to be more creative. So I do design thinking, creative problem solving. And so I'm gonna share with you a tool that can help you do all of that in-person stuff virtually. So when I'm in person, I'm often using a lot of post-it notes. The room that I'm facilitating in is like, the walls are covered and posters and post-it notes and it's just, like this organized chaos and it's super fun, incredibly productive, but how do you do that virtually? So I'm gonna share with you a tool called Mural. So I'm gonna actually share my screen and all of the other panelists are gonna go into the Mural board with me. Um, can you all see my screen? 
Yes, okay, I'm getting a thumbs up from Chad, thank you. So in the mural board, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give them their task first, and then while they're working on the task, I'm gonna zoom out, explain what this is all about, and then we'll come back and see what they've been working on. So their task is to answer this question, to just generate as many ideas as they can think of, on what are all the ways you can imagine the different professions might change because of the pandemic. And so there's a couple that I threw in here ahead of time, like architects will create different homes that like every home will have a built-in office. Fashion designers will focus on clothing where only the neckline matters. So now that we're working virtually, how might that change? So they're gonna go in there and work. And while they're doing that, I am going to give you a little tour of Mural. So Mural is a really robust tool. Um, there's a lot you can do with it. It actually can be a bit overwhelming when you first learn it. Um, Oh, hold on, what is going on? Uh, my screen is, oh, we've got a little freeze and this got moved around, all right. So you can see here, one of the things that we did is I threw a map up there and people put their names and locations, the panelists did before we came in. So it's just a fun, kind of an intro activity that you can do. Um, you could put anything in this board. Actually, let me back up a minute and say, this is basically like a massive whiteboard and you move around it. If you imagine in person, you have like a huge long whiteboard in your, the room you're working on and you have all these activities along the whiteboard. That's exactly what this is. But there's things you can do that you couldn't even do in person. Um, I also threw in here a uh, pulled everybody's LinkedIn profile. So if you're working with a group that doesn't know each other well, you can put that in here. And then if I click on it, it goes to their LinkedIn page. Um, the other thing I can do as a facilitator is I can hide things until I'm ready to share them. So while they're working on that, I'm going to show you um, a couple of other things. So after after um, they're all finished, let's say we wanted to vote on the top of the ideas and then we wanted to sort them and, and figure out, well, which one of these might actually be doable, then we could do something called an importance difficulty matrix, where we literally take these little post-it notes and we put them along a continuum of how important or how difficult would it be for us to do this particular task, this particular idea. And it's really cool because then you end up with some, uh, some ideas. You're like, oh, wow, these are actually not that difficult. Let's start with those. Uh, so that's something that you could do in this. Another example is down here on the bottom, I've thrown in some reflections where at the end of a day or at the end of an experience, you might ask people, what went well? What, what is something you wish? And what is something you wonder? And then each person can uh, type their responses into the post-it note. So that's a bit of a quick, quick overview of Mural and some of the ways you might use it. Let's go back and look at some of the responses that they have. Um, <laughs> oh, this is great. Offices will go back to cubicles, but with a lot more space. Uh, we're moving away from the open space model. So we want people to actually be able to uh, be flipped, be separate from each other. Um, Division of labor, pajama shares will skyrocket. Yeah, right? Schools can have an, in an online option for anyone to opt into. Um, courts go virtual, therapists will be counseling virtually. Doctors, will, I mean, all it's cool because all this stuff is happening already, right? Um, office landlords will add cots to the office. I love it. <laughs> um, all right, give you all another second there. We'll add your last, get one more idea on there. Thanks, Will. So I'm gonna do something for you all facil uh, panelists that I didn't tell you about, but I'm gonna give each of you two votes to decide what do you think are the two best ideas on this mural board? Um, so you'll see, you'll see something pop up on your screen so that you can begin voting. What do you think are the two best ideas on this and you get you get two boat votes so just basically take your cursor and put it right on top and click on whatever you think is the best idea and if you don't like your vote you can shift click all right get your vote in you got 10 seconds left
All right, I'm ending the voting session. Let's see what we got. And all right, hallways will be wider and doctors will meet with you online. Those are two of the top things. Anyway, this was just for fun. We can kind of get a sense of how to use Mural. Um, so I wanted to share that with you all. You can go check it out. It's mural.co. Um, I've been having a blast with it. So I wanted to share that with you all. Just let's maybe riff for a moment. I, I just want to add one idea I thought of is you could completely do the mastermind activity on Mural. Any other riffs on Mural right now? One, uh, one note that was popping through the chat thread there was actually instead of numbers using words, but in sentences. So similar of like, here's a word scramble, put them all together to make sense in meeting. Yeah, for sure. Like each word on a post-it, you could re-sort them. Yep. Also- One of the things, Amy, I appreciated that uh, you shared, Amy, was that Mural is this like really um, robust tool that like we have to, like in the world, in our work, we have to solve really complex problems. Some of you in the chat have mentioned Jamboard, which is a free, much lower fi edition where you can do some of this stuff at a very basic level for free, whereas Mural is kind of like the step up. If you really need to collaborate at an intense level, Murals are a really awesome uh, option. Yeah. If I can just pop in there, I used this with a team yesterday where we'd done a whole lot of visual storytelling and, um, um, and virtual storytelling with each other to get some values and some priorities out. And then we went to Mural to actually do the sorting and the focusing before the action plan was written. Just a really nice way for people to be able to see it and move it together. Cool. Great stuff. All right, Jenny, I'm going to pass it over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Amy. So for all of you that are watching right now, if you would like to play this next game with us, you will just need a piece of paper and a pen or a marker. So I invite you to join us in this next game. So this is going to be building off of what Chad offered earlier around um, connection before content. That is, I'm a big advocate for that. I often talk about connection catalyzes content. So if we want to really create rich moments of learning communities of collaboration we first want to create psychological safety we want people to feel safe to show up as who they are being authentic feeling seen and heard so connection is an amazing way to do that and we're going to do a little exercise together that i love i often use this as an initiation exercise a connection activity to get things rolling it is called blind portrait drawing so for this exercise, again, you just need a piece of paper and a pen, and I'm going to actually pair up our panelists, and they're going to be doing this activity with you. So Will and Lisa, you are going to draw each other, but not yet. Mark and Phil, you will be partners. Chad and Nate, you will be partners. And Amy and Tracy, you will be partners. If you are watching right now, you get to pick a panelist to draw the portrait of. So pick a panelist, any panelist uh, you can choose right now. So please. Get your piece of paper ready, get your pen ready. There are two rules for this portrait. So you have to promise not to disobey the rules. The first rule is that while you're doing your portrait and you haven't started yet, you cannot look down at your page, number one rule. So guess what? Major equalizer, don't have to be an artist. That's not what it's about. So you can't look down at your page. Second rule is you can't lift your pen off the page. So you can't draw eyes and then take it down and draw the nose and then go back up and draw the eyebrows. It's one continuous line drawing, like one big oh. doodle. So that's how it's gonna be. So here we go. You are gazing at your partner. You got your pen on the paper. And for the next 30 seconds, we're gonna draw without looking down at our page. Ready, go. So looking towards your partner, you're trying to find all the details in their face as you can. You could also, if you were doing this at home, I would probably uh, offer you to pin the person's video of the person that you're watching, which makes their face really big. So you get to see more features, but we're gonna stay in gallery for right now. So you're catching all the features as much as you can, the eyes, the nose, the eyebrows, if they have any facial hair, if they have glasses or earrings or a hat. So try to get everything, everything, everything that you can while you are not looking down at your paper. Last five seconds, all the last features that you can get. Scribble, 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 scribble. And pens down. Oh my God. Right. So let's just take a quick hold up your uh, drawing, your portrait, so we can see. Wow, Mark, look at this. Amazing. See, you are all in Picasso's. This is <laughs> Love you, Dad. So great. <laughs> Wonderful. So please, the second part of this activity that I will invite you to do. So you could just, if you were doing this activity, you could just do one layer, right? That would just be the initial portrait. 
Wow. A second layer that I love to add on to this, and whether this works, whether it's a group of strangers or whether it's a group who already knows each other well, I'm going to ask you now whether or not you know the partner that you just drew well, maybe you've just met them being panelists together on this webinar. I'm going to ask you to write on that portrait three qualities that you see in that person, three qualities that you observe in them just in the few moments that you were there, or if you're at home watching, we don't know each other, right? But you're just, you're getting a sense for who we are, it feels. So qualities could be kind, generous, thoughtful, playful, warm, funny, smart, sassy. These are positive qualities, I will make that. <laughs> positive qualities that you observe by being in this person's presence. And you're gonna put those three qualities on that piece of paper. And then let's just hold up those um, again once you have them. Great, so we've got Phil is playful, fun, and empathic. We've got genuine, curious, connected, creative, brave, and warm, engaging, funny, and kind for Mark. Nice kindness, attentiveness, supportive. Global view uplifts others, creative artist. Beautiful, these are great. I love it, name's got generosity, fun, and clever. <laughs> for Tracy, sorry, yeah. Beautiful, so. One thing you could do, you know, after you do an activity like this is then get people, if you're doing breakouts, get people in pairs, get them to share. So good question. What if you don't know them? It actually doesn't matter. I do this mm -hmm. with all the time and it's actually a really beautiful activity to help people realize how much their being communicates who they are beyond what they say or do or their name or age or profession. So just by being in someone's presence, there's so much that we can receive from them. So this is an activity I'm not saying to you directly, gaze deeply into a stranger's eyes for the next two minutes. But essentially it's kind of this very intimate activity where you're really taking in another person, again, maybe someone that you don't know at all. So it can be a very profound way to just ignite connection, create a bond between people, and then, you know, just level the playing field, right? Because no one's drawing is going to be beautiful or perfect. It's just an opportunity for us to get creative. And then not only do we have this connection, but we have an artifact. And so sometimes when I do this in a workshop, I'll have people then, we'll create a gallery of portraits and we'll put them on the wall and we'll keep them up for the rest of the day or the two days. So these are awesome ways that you can create connection in a meaningful way that has a, a beautiful artifact that you can take home later. So that's what I got. That's, that's my thing. Beautiful. So while, while somebody's pondering a riff or something to add on to that, I just want a quick commercial break. I'm reminding you that there's a Q&A feature on Zoom and you can upvote. We're not going to answer questions that only have two upvotes. Um, and so take some time over the next uh, until the webinar ends to go upvote questions because the unofficial end, the 20 minutes after the top of the hour, will be us uh, riffing off questions. Time off, miss. We should probably, I should probably stop talking. Okay. <laughs> Anybody want to add anything to uh, what Jenny just shared? And feel free to add something in the okay. chat too if you're watching. Just a uh, uh, guessing to, game, Jen. Jenny. I'll go ahead, Nate. Oh, thanks, Mark. Um, two things. One is I'm getting text messages from people that drew me. Thank you. And I sent mine to Chad. <laughs> so that's just awesome. Yes. And then I, I had that thought of great conversations of how you see yourself and how you or how someone else sees you to spark a deeper uh, connection there. Yeah. How about you, Mark? Absolutely. I was going to add, uh, make it a guessing game, Jen. Um, so you get to choose which of the nine you're going to draw. You could even draw yourself and then place it up and try and work out who it is. I love that. That's so love fun. That. I was thinking we could, maybe we could do this at the end, change the name on our screen and then we hold this person up instead and then we get a <laughs> screenshot of everybody. <laughs> love it. Awesome. I love, it's such a beautiful heart heart you know gets you right out of your head doesn't it and just yeah. right into feelings and, and not having to worry whether it looks any good it's just got so many great characteristics to it Jen. thank you yeah the last thing i'll say about it is that sometimes i use it as introduction so we'll do this exercise and then i would have my picture and i'd say i'm jenny and tracy drew my picture and the three qualities she saw in me were and three qualities that i see in myself are and yeah. I work in HR and I, you know, whatever else we want to do for intros and it just makes it really sweet and like takes the dryness uh, of intros away and makes it really come alive. So thank you so much for playing with us. And with that, I will pass to Lisa. Yay. Thank you. 
I feel, I'm so glad I was partnered with Will. I feel like the fact that we don't know each other well made it like less intimidating for me. Cause when you say draw something, I'm like, Ugh, automatically. So that was a nice, that was a nice experience for me. So great. I am so excited for this moment that has been building for about, I don't know, nine days now since yeah. I went to the post office. So folks, what I have to offer is a, co a couple concepts that are gonna be brought to life by something, but not so much an exact activity that I suspect you could walk away with. So the concept of the three things I really wanna bring out are um, an invitation to think about how as facilitators in this space that we can have people sort of break the script or have something unusual happen. I find that even if I'm attending a, an activity session or a meeting or something for my kid's school, it's all in the same computer. So how do you as facilitators sort of break the script in that way? And that concept is very well played out in the Heath Brothers Power of Moments book. So breaking the script, another piece that they also describe in that book, Power of Moments, is boosting sensory appeal. How do you add another dimension to your facilitation, whether it's in your environment, maybe something with sound. I saw a lot of comments on Amy's background, which I certainly enjoy looking at too. So what are those different components? And then there's the last component, which I'll get into in just a second, which is about joyful observation. So the thing that I wanna to offer to bring this to life is um, last Monday, I went to the post office and I sent the panel a package. Uh, folks, if you could hold up your package, be mindful that your address will be showing. So be careful about that. My Australian <laughs> friends, it'll, it, it's coming. It's so cold, Maya. <laughs> uh, what I wanna offer you the opportunity to do just to sort of bring the break the script and sensory appeal piece to life, yep, is open up the package. And as I do so, I will instruct you on what you should do next. So go ahead and open it. What you'll find if I did it right are some little tiny things like googly eyes and stickers. You'll find a glue stick and you'll find some pre-cut paper. Okay. So this is going to make a box. Okay. So the gold and white will be the top, the brown will be the bottom. And to assemble the box, all you need to do is take your glue stick and dab some glue wherever I've drawn a dot. That will be the inside of the box. And it will fold together like this. I actually have an assembled one here. Yep. Uh, the before and after. Yeah, there are different sizes and shapes. I put that together while I was watching something on TV last week. So some are a little bit bigger. Yep. And so the last piece, so I mentioned boosting sensory appeal. I mentioned breaking the script. And the piece about that, folks, is that it's not just a surprise. A surprise would be I sent a random package to Nate. Like, what's this for? It's a strategic surprise. So I sent it a week ago. I sent some of you a text message with the tracking number. Some of you wrote me back and said, I got your package. I can't wait. So it's sort of building on that. And then the last piece. So break the script. Boost sensory appeal. And this piece is really important to me in all of my forms of facilitation is find ways to include joyful observation. I find, especially in my challenge course facilitation work, that I really need to remind folks that participation looks like all different kinds of things. And I feel like in the last few months, one of the things that I've missed is the joy that I'm feeling right now, watching people open the package, put together the, the box. Just how do, you, how do you honor that in this virtual space? I haven't quite figured that out, but I'm experiencing a little taste of it right now. Um, my intention with this time is not to, yay, it looks beautiful, is not to like do a tutorial on how to make a craft box, right? That's sort of not the purpose. It could be anything that you've got in the mail. I found the tutorial by using the search term custom size DIY gift box, and you'll, you'll find the video that I found. Um, but that, that's my activity. Break the script, boost sensory appeal, and allow for joyful observation. Mm. And with that, I'd love to ask a couple folks on the panel, like what was it like from getting the package to knowing it was coming to opening it? Like what was that experience like? 
I love this idea for building community because we could have people create the boxes and then the next piece would be to create something that goes in the box and then we ship it to somebody else. Love it. And there's this way that it can get passed on and passed on and passed yeah. on. Maybe, maybe it's a combination of Jenny's artwork that goes in the box that gets sent to the person we drew. So yeah. you get to keep that artifact. I like that concept. Nice. For me, it leverages that uh, art of facilitation, building in anticipation. You know, we struggle to find ways in person or online to engage people. And anticipation is just one of those tools. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love that concept, Lise. Yeah. I, I mean, and I think that the added benefit, this is not a, a seminar about our own experiences facilitators, but it really allowed me to feel engaged and connected. I don't know a lot of you well, so it was just fun to take a moment and write out your address and send you something, an opportunity for us to engage more. Like I got the package, I'm excited. So um, just to, uh, folks will probably ask, the, the books I referred to is The Power of Moments by Chip and Dan Heath. Another one that influences my thinking around this greatly is Priya Parker's The Art of Gathering. Mm. Um, so enjoy your box. I look forward to seeing what you do next with those. Awesome. So uh, and I Nate. am turning it over to Nate. Thanks, Nate. Lisa. Welcome. That was wonderful. Love it. Um, so I had a couple of thoughts coming into what to do here. And one had to do with music. And I scrapped that even though pulling from that sensory thread, it's like there's a lot we can do with music. And I do want to mention Folks like Jimmy Fallon are, for me, rocking it of both in person and then virtual of how to bring in music in unique and different ways and challenge people to create. Um, where I went though was thinking, okay, I'm, I'm towards the end of this lineup and of wonderful people. So thank you all um, to this point and Will, looking forward to yours in just a moment. Uh, but the opportunity to reflect. And what came to me was an exercise I learned, I don't know, seven or eight years ago at a conference focused in particular around diversity and inclusion. Yet, I think it's, uh, it, it's both, yeah, I don't even wanna justify it. It's so appropriate for now. And I learned it as a new anthem. And basically what I'm doing and what I've done is provided the panelists a framework to reflect on themselves. And panelists, this, this can be in the past 50 minutes on this particular call, you might have some thoughts that come through or the past say seven to eight weeks or so, um, or whenever really the COVID times have landed for you and what's happening in that present moment in the past few weeks. And the framework, um, I'm gonna pull up here to show everyone what I sent out, is these, these four boxes. And I'm gonna keep it just like that. Actually, I might do this. I am, I believe, I hope, and I will. And whether you're panelists, you're writing right now, or you did this previous, in fairness, I only gave them about maybe an hour or two before the call and said, hey, how about this? Um, but respond to that in whatever way comes up for you. And you can do this in the chat as it's coming up. Take a moment and actually reflect for yourself is who are you essentially? And answer these questions. I am, I believe, I hope, I will. And as panelists are recording their thoughts about how they might respond. And I find my cursor. I'm gonna drop this for a moment. The invitation is to create a new anthem, right? And just out of curiosity, I looked up anthem and you might have your own meaning for that, but think about uh, a song that everyone can get behind, or in this case, a spoken word. And the way we're gonna create that is this. Is anyone in the group can start at any time and can end at any time. You can read any part, whole or, or, or part of it um, to what you wrote down to the group. You can overlap other people. So two, three, four, nine voices can happen at the same time, as well as one voice might be heard in that moment. You can repeat, you can play off of one another. It's a true collaborative space. And at some point, what happens for me when I've done this is a rhythm and a magic occurs as people start to share and perhaps as they share to choose to be more vulnerable. And as that happens, you'll learn, you'll start to play off and there's this back and forth that can happen. And there's a little crescendo and then it actually stops. Now I have no idea what's gonna happen in the next minute or two here when we start to share. 
So I'm curious, and ultimately what we're doing is creating a new anthem, an anthem as we move forward with our times. And we're gaining that from the present moment, our reflections on who we are in the past. So bringing all that forward, when you're ready to roll, we're gonna roll and you can bounce again off of one another. Chad. So I am going to acknowledge that we are at the top of the hour and we're all time optimists and we're gonna run over. And I'm here to lure you to stick around for an extra few minutes because the last bit that Will will share will blow your mind and how to use Zoom because it did for me and I spend <laughs> a lot of time with Will. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. Thanks, y'all, for sticking around, whoever can. I will live love. I believe this will enrich me. I'm a human. I will keep my heart and mind open. I believe we all have good intentions. I believe this pandemic will increase our collective creativity. I will continue to explore. I will be better because of this. I hope we will respect what this time is teaching us. I believe we can become a better world through all this. And we want you to wrap it up with that last piece there. I hope I continue to connect with people around the world. Nice. So simply this piece, uh, you know, this is a snapshot of it, adding a layer of music behind this instrumental has been pretty powerful and watching people back and forth. And it's just a beautiful um, piece of art that emerges. And the piece that I love most about that is we don't know what's going to emerge until we start. So we've started with and over to Will. Thank you, Nate. Will, really, really quick. Well, I sorry. I just want to uh, officially, and I'm assuming that loads, of, some of you who have to go have loads of questions. Um, the recording will be shared out to this. Um, uh, please drop into the Q and A, upvote questions so we can answer some of your top ones um, at the top of the hour. And then there's this other thing. If if you have questions for spec uh, based on specific things we shared, there's this really awesome resource called Google where you can find all of our information. And uh, I think uh, we might be slow to respond, but the invite is to uh, reach out to us. There will also be an automatic follow up going out to everybody with one free resource from each of us. It'll be automatically sent from Zoom. So keep an eye out for that. And Will, I'm really done now. Please take us and blow us our, blow our mind. Man, you have set me up. Um, so Mark started us with the unofficial start. We also believe that closing is really important. So how do you create intimacy online, right? And I don't mean Hollywood intimacy. I mean intimacy in such a way that I see you, I hear you, I get you, I understand who you are in the world. And so we're gonna do that right now. And I'm gonna walk you through the process without telling you really what we're doing for speed's sake. So what I'd like every panelist to do is to turn off your video. So on the bottom where it says stop video, click that. Right next to it, there's a little up button, a little up arrow, click on that and it says view settings. Click view settings. And near the bottom, there is one, a third from the bottom, it says hide non-video participants. So go ahead and click that. And now everybody will hide. Looks like Mark and there they go. And so now everybody is gone. Jenny, because you haven't seen this, I'd like you to turn yours on if you would. And somebody who would like to say something to Jenny in a moment can turn theirs on as well. So Jenny's not there by herself. And Jenny, I'm gonna turn, thank you, Phil. But before we do that, let's get to know Jenny just a little bit. Jenny, what's this image make you think about in your world? Um, well, it makes me think about the, the Hobbit house um, from Lord of the Rings. So it makes me think of like somewhere safe and idyllic um, and utopian and sweet. Thank you, Jenny. And Phil, your job, if you're so willing, is we've gotten a chance to work with Jenny a couple hours and putting this all together. What's a gift that you see that Jenny brings to the world? Uh, I think she brings um, 
bringing art into a world that where we're not really really wanting to do the art i mean it in terms of like uh all of us aren't doodlers but what you did in that activity brought us that art and in a way that i particularly enjoy but others may not so i think that it made it open to all so i love the invitation to all uh with the medium of art thanks phil Thank you. And Jenny, you did a lovely job of saying thank you. Thank you. Tell me more. Thank you. I liked hearing that. Thank you. Can you write a letter to my mother? And so what we've done is a nice little appreciation. So if you two can turn your videos back off. And Nate, why don't we have you come forward? And somebody who would like to give a appreciation for Nate can turn on their video and say a kind word of appreciation for Nate. Oh, now we got Mark and Tracy. Mark, why don't you go ahead? Oh, they both tried to leave. <laughs> there you go, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey, Nate. Something I, so repeat the question, Will. Something you appreciate about Mark oh, or about uh, Nate is a gift to the world. Yes. As soon as you said it, it was just as you had demonstrated here, Nate, your ability to read the group and see what was necessary. You're, you're able to be really sensitive to the needs of the group and, and what you were able to do in that reflection was a great example of what you just occurred for, for me, but for all the groups you work with. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mark. And if everybody could turn your video back on, I think you all got a chance to experience in a little micro moment, a little bit of intimacy. And so instead of keeping track of nine thumbnails or if you got 45 thumbnails or 80 thumbnails how can you create an intimate conversation that everybody can be involved with use for appreciation it could be you you saw me use images and which is a way of getting people to say something new and fresh it could be used in a way of a graduation ceremony or as a close and it could be a way of starting so that's my little tidbit about ways to create intimacy stopping your video just bringing two people forward and Jenny and Phil, can you, well, let's just do Jenny. Jenny, did you feel like you were having an intimate conversation with Phil and what was that like? Yeah, I mean, it, it felt a, a little bit like um, exposed, a little bit, I was like, oh my God, it's just us. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It felt like, yeah, being on, also because you know you're being witnessed. So then it's like, oh, we're on the spot, you know, but it, it did create this feeling of, of just the two of us um, in a different way. Yeah. yeah, and a word of caution, if I was to do this with people who are not professionals, I would take a little bit more time to set it up and give people some choice and, and some voice about how they would want to participate. But I stole all your voice and choice to do it quickly. I would invite, if anybody does steal and use this, to make sure that people have voice and choice, because that is a way that you can make connection, belonging, and trust happen. So we're going to call that the official, official end. And Chad's trying to say something. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm just, uh, for those of you who have uh, lingered, over uh, 400 people have uh, stuck around and shared a lot of time. I don't know how many days this all adds up to, but um, thank you for being around. I'm launching one final poll with one question, um, which you can see we just scratched the surface. There's so much living in your brains and all of our brains that we didn't share, that we didn't get to. And so if you would like to opt into each getting um, at one email from uh, most of us, so you're not going to be added to a list. I don't even need to frame this anymore. Everybody is saying yes. So I'll wait until everybody answers the poll and then um, I'll end poll and, and we'll, we'll follow up with resources to whoever says yes to this. Um, we need we'll one person out. to say no. Go that one yeah, person. Yeah. Two people yeah. said no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Three people said no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that that's a, a good net promoter score, that 99.9% .9 of people said, yeah, yeah, send me some good, <laughs> some good free stuff. I'll leave it open for another minute um, before I close it if you're still looking for the full feature. Um, but Mark, I don't know if we talked about uh, you kind of spearheading q and it's, uh, it's a pretty clear like five questions have kind of rose yeah. to the top that I would say we focus our time on. Um, yeah, yeah and, so I, and I don't know if you want to guide us into that. I'm happy to help moderate it, but can you run the Q&A? Because that's a, a function on Zoom I've not used before. So can you help us with that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm assuming as a participant that you can see which questions were upvoted. Um, so let's take them uh, from the top down. So the question um, from Annie has 65 upvotes. Um, and it just reads, what are some ways, so what are some other ways to get people out of their virtual bubble besides uh, going and having people find an object? 
And Chad, I will help. Jenny. No. Yeah. Chad, I'll help read those so you can uh, relax a little bit cool. if you want. Yeah. And so I, will isn't... <laughs> I will say that I have hosted a dance party on Zoom. I was, I, my first response was no, it can't be done. But we used multiple computers, figured out how to share the audio, and we had people all over doing a dance party. And they were definitely outside of this little zone. So <laughs> let it be open. Somebody else go. Yeah, so I was going to share another quick exercise that I really love. I call it backstage pass. So basically, when we're on a, a format like this, right, there's this box, and that's all you can see. That's the stage. But what's backstage? What's behind that? So I often I encourage people to take uh, their their teammates or whoever is like on a little tour, and I take this thing around, and I show you it's in my room, and maybe I show you my dirty laundry in the corner, and I show you <laughs> my unmade bed, and I show you my fluffy slippers or whatever it is. You know, I show you my backyard that's out here, and like these little flower plants I'm growing, and so it's just a way to kind of get up, get moving, and you know, share something that's actually pretty intimate, which is for most of us right now working from home, our home spaces. Um, so I find people find this like really uh, beautiful connecting exercise and it gets you up and moving. I, I, uh, maybe. I use energizers um, as well and um, you know, just good old brain gym, getting people to do a six from the top to the center with their left foot and then turning their left uh, foot in a clockwise direction. So you sort of, your brain goes, wah! Um, and, and then doing it with the right. So six from the top to the center, clockwise direction. That's a bit of fun, that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. And, and One, many and of whoever, the, go, go ahead, Kat. I was gonna say many of the con content that uh, we're gonna be sharing at the end of the webinar, uh, will give you tons of ideas for just those little little energizer ideas or just other ways that you can engage people as well. I would say so as, be... as right, Amy's yeah. going, um, can we all just do another one that I appreciate, which is uh, right now, even if you're uh, watching this, get up from your own uh, spot and just check in with your body. Like what needs to be stretched or pulled or moved and just do that while Amy is sharing. And then will maybe you can jump in after Amy. Uh, one of the things that I've done and I know Chad and I have actually done this together where a group of people are on that have some similar work to do together. And we actually turn off our videos, turn off and mute ourselves. And we decide to leave for a certain amount of time, five, 10, 30 minutes and do a task. And then we come back and we check in on whatever that task was. It could be like a writing assignment. It could be, you can get really creative with it, but um, it's like, yeah, just turn off video and audio. We're still here, still together. If somebody wants to jump in and chat and say something they can, um, yeah. but we're kind of working independently or working on a shared anything, yeah. That's perfect with what I was about to say, Amy. You could put people in breakout rooms and have them exchange phone numbers and actually talk to each other and get up and go for a walk and actually be in a conversation using totally. this old technology called a phone. All right. Um, what are some different ways of keeping my employees engaged during meetings while dealing with a team of mixed ages and tech abilities? I'll drop that in the chat box in case somebody can't see that in the Q&A. What are some different ways of keeping my employees engaged during meetings? Let's, let's dem actually demonstrate one um, and share. So raise your hand if you've got something to add to that some comment to share. So Mark, then Jenny, then Tracy, you can go ahead and we don't have to talk over each other. Mark, then Jenny, then Tracy. Uh, I'll make a quick uh, TED.com, make it really obvious that the average adult can concentrate and focus on something for about 20 minutes at max. So you know, chunk it, keep it into small pieces and then break up the pace is, is the, the, the easiest option in my opinion. Um, I think a lot of, you know, just kind of calling out what we've already been doing here, the polls, the chats, um, anyway, to plus one, what you're saying, Mark, like I always refer to the fact that, you know, it, it, apparently the adult attention span is eight seconds. <laughs> so like, how do you design for a kindergarten attention span, knowing that the challenge when we're in these environments online is that there's no accountability. There's no accountability for your attention. So if you don't have people's attention, nothing else is going to happen. So you have to design for engagement as your primary driver. And then anything that happens after that is bonus. So just, just like you're saying, Mark, like 
It's very small bite-sized chunks, then a question they put in the chat, a, a poll that pops up, a breakout group, a group discussion, some popcorn sharing. Like, how can you really pull people into the here and now uh, in a way that's meaningful for them? Yeah, I, and I was just going to add that um, that breakout that breakout stuff is so important, isn't it? Asking a great inquiry question, see, Amy, um, uh, or you go, or, or you've got something to add in. <laughs> sorry, I thought I thought you were waving goodbye. Um, <laughs> I wanted to go next. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, it's so many great things that, that that Jenny's put in that list, but I find that breakout rooms just allow for that equaliser, and spe especially if you set up that everyone's voice in that breakout room and make them small enough so that everyone has a voice. All they need to do is be able to speak rather than um, worrying about technology so much. I was gonna say, I think one of the best things you can do to keep your meetings engaging is actually to plan the meetings and be very, very intentional about the time that you're spending together. Um, I used to work at a university and I just think about, wow, if I had just added up the time, the hours I spent in going to meetings where it was an hour meeting just by default, but really it could have been 15 minutes or maybe 25 minutes. Um, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars I think are wasted because we don't put enough prep into meetings in advance. And I uh, just want to give a shout out to a colleague of ours, Donna McGeorge, who has a book called The 25 Minute Meeting. Excellent. Just kind of lays out like, here's how to make your meeting really engaging, get a lot done in a short amount of time. And I think that'll help increase engagement with all these other ideas too. And we walked out, talked, didn't we, Amy? Uh, the hours in advance of this hour <laughs> was pretty extraordinary. It's true. <laughs> if you send people off into breakout rooms, give them a quote or something that is intentional about the type of conversation you want to have in that breakout room. And so then that way that they can think about who they want to be when they show up. And with the, with the tech challenges, that was part of the question. Um, I give time for that for them to try and practice. So annotate as a Zoom feature. Um, if you don't give opportunities to practice that, you're gonna get people scribbling on every single thing you're doing from now until the end. So leave a blank page, let people play, uh, go nuts on it if they need to, but then they've got the opportunity to practice. And it's also incredibly engaging watching people draw all over a blank screen. So that in itself is fun. Mm -hmm. You guys ready for your next question? Yeah. Hit us. Stephanie asked, how do you balance and build space for play with the gravity of COVID-19 has created during these times? I got one to kick off that I think all of us would do, give a big head nod to, um, which is the concept we didn't actually talk a ton about um, that happens in all of our in-person work, but this idea of challenge by choice of inviting people to engage at a level of their own comfort. And so one of the ways that um, but, you know, before prompting people with a question, I like to remind people that uh, we're all questions hit us in all sorts of contexts of our life. And so just reminding people that you have 100% complete autonomy in how you answer that question right now. And so I could ask you, you know, what's your greatest struggle right now? And you could answer by saying, eh, it's a little bit cold, I should have put on a jacket. Or you could say, I'm really suffering with my mental health because I've been cooped up and I'm homeschooling three kids and I've got, and I'm just overwhelmed. Right. And both of those are true and okay. And they're at a different level of vulnerability. And so I think just acknowledge like being able to point out the elephant in the room and frame that challenge by choice of like, if you're not doing really well because of the gravity of what's happening right now, this space is okay to offer that. Um, and just being clear with that. That's one. Yeah, we're going to do order again. Mark, I see unmute and then Lisa and then Jenny. In the same way that in our in-person meetings, uh, uh, the environment dictates performance. So I'm just concurring what you're saying, Chad. And I think, to, you know, Amy talked about the importance of the agenda. I feel like that can also shape that um, how I show up to play. I find, and this happened with some colleagues at High Five recently, that like, how are you? It could be like, uh, I don't, how do you answer that? So almost like knowing that we're not going to do the like regular check-in and we're going to go right to a game and then right to the agenda. And then if folks want to check in about how they're coping with life, that can be separate. I almost find that scripted actually helpful. It helps me be present. So even adding how are folks going to connect into that agenda um, has been really helpful. Yeah. A few weeks ago, a 
principal asked me to help their teachers and she gave me a huge gift. And that was, there was no way that the teachers were gonna learn anything new unless I took a moment to acknowledge the grieving that they were having of the past. And so if you want the balance, acknowledge where they're at, give some words to that, give as much space as you need, but it could be as short as a sentence, a minute, maybe five minutes max, but then move on to what you want to create, but give a space to what is real and don't try to hide it and make it rush away. Yeah. I want to plus one, what you said, well, and I think a lot of us that are saying, it's just like acknowledgement first. And I think there's also ways that we can acknowledge in a playful way. Sometimes I think we think like tragedy and play or sadness or grief and play are separate, but actually oftentimes play is a, is a healing balm for sadness and grief. And it, and it can shift us in a powerful way uh, in an invitational way. So what, recently on one of the online programs I did, I did a poll as an opener and I just said, said, you know, how have you been using a weather analogy? How have you been feeling in the recent weeks? And then I gave from like the, the most extreme one was like hurricanes with hail. Then it was like thunderstorms and lightning. And then it was like a light rain with wind. And then it went to like partially cloudy, partially sunny. And then it was bright blue skies. And then it was like full sun. So people got to acknowledge this is how I've been feeling. But there was kind of a playful analogy metaphor that gave it a little bit of lightness where someone could raise their hand and be like, I'm in hurricanes with with hail right now. And it's also okay. You know, it just creates a little bit of levity to be like, yeah, we're all suffering from the human condition and that's just what it is. So I think there's ways to, to bring both and that we shouldn't shy away from play in times like this, but also we can't do that solely without acknowledging the gravity of what's happening for people. Next question is what games like Zoom Mastermind can you share? And Will, I want to combine that question um, with one a few down. And this probably will be our last bit, actually. Um, combine that question with uh, did you attend a Zoom training? No, no, no. Wait, wait. Ah, so like, how did you learn how to do all of this stuff is essentially the question. And I think um, as we answer Will's question of what other like games, kind of problem solving exercise experiences have we done? Um, I think I just want to acknowledge that all of us, I'm assuming uh, we didn't call ourselves, here's the expert panel of nine experts to give you all the answers. Like we're attempting to figure all of this out too. And we've been doing this for, you know, before pre-virus and the best way to learn whether something works or not is right just to experiment with it. So to get a group together of six people who were like, hey, can you test this exercise with me and just game storm a little bit with them to tweak it until until you get it right and not be attached to having it right the first time and actually inviting people to contribute to making the experience what it is rather than relying on it being amazing. Okay. Yep. For example, uh, so, Chad, we had fully intended this to go live stream to YouTube but we discovered we needed to give Zoom 24 hours notice to approve our application. Oh. So we didn't go live stream. We learned that today. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, I just wanted but, to add to the question about where do we learn more? Um, after this, you're going to get an email and there is mm -hmm. a link from all nine of us with additional resources. So all of us have put together extra resources for you that if you just go to that link and sign up, we will each send you stuff. Um, so you potentially could get nine different emails with a bunch of resources, but uh, you will have plenty to do for sure. <laughs> plenty of activities. And I just want to give a vote of thanks to, to Amy because when this all started, Amy just got her stuff together so quickly and put out some free web webinars to, to get people sort of excited about doing, breaking down this third or fourth wall that the screen creates. And I just love her stuff. And then a fabulous online course that's just, it, it was brilliant to be able to step into that and uh, to spark thinking. So thanks, Amy. I think it's just such a great thing that you very quickly moved on. Cool. Thank you, Tracy. So that's actually, uh, and there I think the best answer to the question of what else can we do is uh, we're sending an email with an immense amount of resources that you can pick and choose from and like look at video tutorials, and ideas and read um, concepts, listen to uh, podcasts, etc. And so um, really nice curated list that will be well worth your time. So Nate, I'm wondering if you have that quote. Um, a professional storyteller once told me that all you need to know to tell an amazing story is just know the first sentence and the last sentence. And I wonder if we can make the last sentence of our experience together today, uh, the quote that you had emailed out to us. Oh, lovely. 
Can you read that for us? Sure, here we go. This is from John Shar, who's a futurist, right? Someone that thinks about the future. So the future is not some place we are going to, but one we are creating. The paths are not to be found, but made, and the activity of making them changes both the maker and the destination. So in both Australian and American Sign Language, uh, this is applause. So if we can all give everybody the 300 people that stuck around, um, even through all the way through the Q&A, uh, just a big thank you for your time. And um, we really, really enjoyed being with you and look forward to sharing some cyberspace again sometime soon. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks, Bye, everybody. folks. Thanks, Have a great John. day, night, Bye. evening, afternoon. I like we should have a group photo. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Hold up. Hold up characters. I didn't get a chance to draw well, Can Nate. I get a picture um, of your craft boxes too? My yes. box didn't fit together. Oh no. <laughs> I couldn't oh, figure no. it out. I might so have been user error for sure. I no, it was probably working. me. Uh, I'll send you a new one, Amy. It's okay. You were so subtle about it. Actually, this was my favorite part. Google yeah, the Googlies. Those are stickers. Thank you, yeah, folks. Yeah. They're going to go on something. OK, photo, group photo. Are we changing our names? Yeah, do you want to do that? Click. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that would be fun. Photo? Change our names Photo? to what? <laughs> what are we changing well, it we'll to? No, what was your suggestion? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop recording as soon as we have all of our pictures up. But what are we changing okay. our names to? Or we, to the person we drew. or we just write their name on write it. Your, write their name, oh, on it. Write name on it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Less confusing. <laughs> So this way I could stand next to Lisa. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the selfie you is the shot, happening. Ted? Or Zelfie, to be clear. Zelfie. 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 Three, two, <laughs> one. Boom. And the recording is stopped. Thanks all for hanging out. <laughs>